and welcome to this week's episode of the VX Factor Live Profiles in Entrepreneurship. We're with Tony Carcamo. We'll be right back. And welcome back to the VX Factor Live. Happy to have Tony Carcamo with uh, Civil CAD Learning Solutions with us today, fellow member here at VentureX by the Galleria. I think you were actually maybe the very first member, weren't you? Uh, possibly. My yeah. neighbor, uh, Adrian, she's a CPA. She also has an office here, uh, and she, I think she actually moved in about the same time I did. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so it was kind of interesting. My neighbor moved in the same yeah. time. So. But benefits of being first, you yeah. got to choose yeah. one of the best offices yeah, in, the, I, in, the, in the whole space. So, I actually yeah. was checking it out during construction the whole time. I right. came in every two weeks and yeah. talked to the team and checked out the floor plan, <laughs> yeah. so it was pretty nice. Yeah. So Everybody else has office envy, by yeah. the way, <laughs> just, just letting you know. No, but your, your space is really cool, though, too. I mean, you know, with the with the stuff that you've put up in there and, and your mouse collection. Yeah. What you What's funny, it wasn't my first choice. It was actually, right. like, my second choice. Oh, okay. My first choice was Adrian. Adrian actually, oh, really? she, yeah. she, she actually took the, my first option. So, okay. like, oh, you know what, I'll just go ahead and go with the second option option here right. so, and bit the billet so so do you guys have like you know legal paperwork in place so that whenever somebody oh. moves out you'll be yeah <laughs> No, yeah. no, I don't, but I'm sure, you know, Nadine probably has a list of people that if I did move out, somebody yeah. would jump in immediately, so. Cool. Yeah. Um, so let's uh, let's get into a, a little bit of a discussion about your business. I find it very interesting what mm -hmm. you do, and I know that you're one of the best in the industry mm -hmm. at what you do. Um, but uh, just for the benefit of our viewers, why don't you start just by telling us just a little bit about kind of your background okay. and, and what made you want to actually be in business for yourself what okay. was that what was that kind of factor that that made you decide you know what i'd better i'd be better off on my own well um my background uh right after high school and i graduated i went to the air force u.s okay. air force and i went to the civil engineering squadron so i got a lot of training in there doing surveying drafting site inspection just a vast um, knowledge of everything that's in the aec industry so i got a lot of uh, training once I got out, I moved to San Antonio and started working for a civil engineering company there. So I was there for six years and learned a lot uh, through a <coughs> senior engineer. So I um, moved to Dallas 2006, continued doing uh, civil engineering for bigger firms, much mm -hmm. bigger firms, became a CAD manager. And the role of a CAD manager is really training, tech support, and design support, So uh, and managing um, the software, too. So I did that for several years. Um, setting up the templates for the company so everybody for every project that gets started you've got to use a template so I was the one creating the templates working with the teams make sure it was efficient but after a while you know the bigger the company the longer it takes to get things approved I said you know what you know I think it's time for me to move out I still enjoy teaching let me go and expand my teaching to nationally you know mm. so I did decide to get out 2017 in the fall I started my own company, um, so now my company what, uh, provides training uh, online or in person, um, even videos, uh, content videos, mm. and uh, tech support on the software, multiple software such as AutoCAD, Civil 3D, InfoWorks, Vehicle Tracking, uh, Navisworks, Recap, so everything that's related to civil engineering, mm. I do even basic AutoCAD. Um, also provide 3D modeling, I'll create 3D models for developers. Um, that want to develop a land residential commercial. So I'll create a 3D model, and sometimes I'll push it into VR if they want it in VR. Mm -hmm. They'll take it to city council, city zoning. So uh, just a vast uh, amount of services that I do provide. So anything mm -hmm. for developers or even engineers. So some engineering company will actually hire me for um, design support. Mm -hmm. So there's many companies will call me up, hey, we're behind on projects. You know, you did the training for us. Can you come in and help us out finish the uh, the project for us? So, mm. based on my availability, I'll come in and help them. So yeah, mm. so it's it's a vast you know vast amount of services I provide. So, so the the types of projects uh, that you kind of work on right now, mm -hmm. mostly on on the project side, those are like larger kind of you know like helping helping them figure out like uh, roadways entry exit points plotting like where mm -hmm. certain things should go yep. in infrastructure yep. that type so of I do thing. I do site plans for developers and investors are looking to develop a commercial mixed-use 
or um, residential like apartments or even subdivisions. So mm -hmm. I'll come in and do the site plans for them, analyze the site, uh, try to make it work, meeting the codes for the city ordinance and city zoning. So, mm -hmm. you know, that takes, you know, a day or two for me to get it worked out for them and work with a developer, create different concepts. You don't want to just put all your eggs in one, in one basket and one mm -hmm. site plan. So I'll create sometimes up to five different concepts for the developer mm -hmm. and then we'll kind of analyze the construction cost too of that site. And then we work with another party for look at the numbers, you know, um, uh, analytics of this property, how, how much you're going to make back on the property. So, mm -hmm. so we work with another team here, actually in house. So Teresa, yeah. uh, Teresa, mm -hmm. with their team. So, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, you know, it's it's fun. I'll actually, it's challenging. Every site has a challenge of how to get the site to work, parking ratios and landscaping and open spaces and mm -hmm. attention ponds. So. Um, but it's fun, and you know, then I'll turn around and create a 3D model out of it if they mm -hmm. want to, you know, so they can take it to the city council or city zoning or even their investors and look at it. So, yeah, it's know. really cool. Sometimes I just like walk by your office and see you working on something, and <laughs> I'll just stand there and like, wow, that's pretty cool. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. it's, it's, it's fun. I still yeah. enjoy. It. I've been doing this for 21 years now, yeah. so I don't know anything else, you yeah. know. So, but every year I'm trying to learn new software and advance my skills. So I, I, when I'm not working, I'm learning new software. Um, I'm looking into more VR, maybe even AR later on down the road. Mm -hmm. um, so I do a lot of stuff for Autodesk, you know, so I do some, a little bit of consulting for uh, Autodesk, you know, testing products and stuff like that, giving them a lot of feedback mm -hmm. and tell them, hey, this is what I need to achieve uh, certain types of projects and, um, or, or tasks mm -hmm. within projects. So, so um I have to ask about the mouse collection. <laughs> I, think, I think everybody asks about, that passes by my office, all the, the gaming mouses so, I have. So how many are there? I have 40 plus gaming mouses. It looks like uh, more. Yeah, it's 40, there's some in the drawer, so, and there's another 20 on my list. Yeah. So if you've ever been in my office, I have shelves of shelves of gaming mouses, all the top gaming mouses out there yeah. from 20... 18 and 19, yeah. maybe 17. And then some of them are not gaming mouses. Some are, are ergonomical uh, mouses, very mm -hmm. unique. Um, mm -hmm. So I had to get them. So the, re the, the whole story about the, the gaming mouse is I needed a, a good hobby that was kind of fun but still work-related. You know, So I'm like, okay, what can I do that's kind of fun but work-related? And I decided to do gaming mouses because I was watching a YouTube cha uh, channel about gamers, you mm -hmm. know, checking all these gaming mouses. Like, you know what? I'm going to start a YouTube channel related to using these gaming mouses on engineering software. Oh, okay. Can I use these gaming mouses and program some of these buttons to um, be more efficient? Mm -hmm. You know, so that's the whole purpose. I'm going to create a channel mm -hmm. where I'm going to go around testing every one of these gaming mouses on different tar different parts of software and yeah. say, hey, this will definitely save you time for these kind of gaming mouses that have 12 buttons on them. Um, so that's the whole purpose, really. Uh, okay. So eventually, here in a month or two, I'm going to start uh, posting uh, videos on YouTube. Okay. And, I, and it's not for everybody. I'm. It's for basically architects, engineers that use Autodesk products and stuff. Yeah. But I think I thought it'd be fun because I'm still working, but I'm using these new right. tech, new stuff that everybody, you know, all the gamers use. So I, I thought it'd be fun. That's cool. But you know, behind that will be the VR headsets. I got mm -hmm. a bunch of VR headsets where you can just slide your phone in. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do some reviews on those VR headsets and say, hey, this, if you want better quality, use this headset. Mm -hmm. If you got this type of phone, like iPhone or Android or something, right. this best works for this type of phone, yeah. you know, if you want to look at something in VR. So, so yeah. that's next, my next project. So, All right, cool. Uh, yeah, so, uh, and there's some other projects I got going on, too, yeah. <laughs> down the pipeline. So. <laughs> And it's a con good conversation yeah. starter. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> and it is. Everybody, everyone asks me all that stuff. So, yeah. you know, even with the Star all the Star Wars helmets I have yeah. in their office, yeah. so that's just for play. You're right. So, uh, but I'm also I also write uh, content for a magazine, uh, Augie uh, mag uh, magazine. So it's uh, Autodesk University International mm -hmm. Group. So mm -hmm. I write tips and tricks on certain uh, on InfraWorks product mm -hmm. software and just give share my ideas and updates on the software every month there's a new article getting released online so cool. um not the best writer so good good thing they got a te on board <laughs> to kind of red line and make revisions and stuff like that right. but it's it is kind of fun to kind of share uh my thoughts and ideas and tips and tricks um online to other users that can go and access on there so um but uh yeah so cool <laughs> 
Well, we're going to uh, we're going to take a short break in a second just to recognize our our sponsors uh, mm -hmm. for the program. Okay. But on the flip side, I want to kind of continue that conversation into kind of what you're doing with LinkedIn and some of okay. the projects you're working on with that too, and how that's okay. help, how that's helping you grow your business. Okay. But first, we're going to take a quick break and uh, hear from our sponsors for today's program. We'll be right back. Adults in the U.S. consume five and a half hours of video content every day, almost one and a half hours on digital devices. 64% of consumers say that watching a marketing video has influenced a purchasing decision. Adding video to a website landing page can increase conversion by up to 80%. Are you ready to win with video marketing? Now is your chance to learn. Easy steps to add video to your current marketing. Why a three-tiered video content strategy is best. Best practices for live video on social media. Pros and cons of professional versus DIY video. And tips for getting better results with video. Gain the confidence to grow your business and brand with video marketing. Request your speaker today. definition of a co-working space is set up for the small businesses. This is my first time um, foraying into becoming an entrepreneur and so leaving corporate life behind it's a very new adventure. What I like about VentureX is actually the collaborative and community focus that you can get here. The events that go on I've actually actually picked up clients at these events and some of the members here are actually my clients. So I think that's a major plus. The, the way Nadeem um, is always there and is ready to listen to you and very flexible with any of your needs. Um, that's remarkable and very, very different from all the other experiences that I've had. I love working out of here. I love the atmosphere. I love the people. I love the fact that sometimes different members will come up and just kind of converse and we get to kind of get out of our own heads and help each other. I like the design of, of VentureX. It's, it's motivational, it's inspirational. Um, and each, each location is different and unique in its own way. Being in the architecture industry and in the construction industry, I'm on to my job sites like four to five times a day. And so in and out is very easy here. Um, parking right in front of you and coming right in is very, very convenient. If you're sitting at a desk, you're not making money in real estate. So it's nice to be able to be mobile and still have an office setting where you can still meet, greet, and potentially meet new clients even. They have all the amenities I need, you know, so from printers to food to coffee. Uh, if there's something I need, you know, they'll go out and try to seek it and get it for me. So I think I, it's a major plus for me for what I do. I feel like my company looks bigger than it is, which is a one-person company. Taking away all these little headaches from an entrepreneur who, for the first time ever, I'm having to figure out how to be everything. <laughs> That's an amazing thing to feel like I've got some support system behind me. To really, really feel loved in the community, which is which, which helps anybody who's an entrepreneur and business owner. You know, it's nice to know that you got a whole team of cheerleaders uh, backing you up and cheering you on. Um, and so that's really how VentureX has helped me. And welcome back to the VX Factor Live Profiles in Entrepreneurship. Again, we're with Tony Carcamo with uh, Civil CAD Learning Solutions. So we were just talking a little bit about some of the extra things that you do to kind of share your knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that you've recently been working on a big project with LinkedIn, uh, part of their learning platform, and actually went out and you know filmed a bunch of content yes. uh, at their facility out there and uh, and have some more on the way so uh, tell us a little bit about kind of how that came about and how you're using that to okay. develop your authority even more and grow your business yeah I um, for several years I actually created online training content on some of the Autodesk products um, then I took a break and then I had a buddy contact me and said, hey do you want to do it with LinkedIn and I said yeah I think they've reached out to me two years ago and I just I turned them down because I was actually busy mm -hmm. so if <clears throat> most people probably don't know that LinkedIn bought out lynda.com lynda.com mm -hmm. was a big platform for uh, e-learning mm -hmm. uh, videos so now it's LinkedIn learning so um, so so they contacted me and say hey, would you like to do you know 
this Autodesk product, you know, these two products, like, yeah, I have time to do it. So just re recently, like last month, I went to uh, one of their facilities in California um, to their audio and video facility, spent a whole week out there creating content uh, for the, the software. It hasn't been released yet. So it's still under editing right now, and then I'm going to be going back out there again here in a week or two to do the second software out of this product. Um, so it's been fun, you mm -hmm. know. It's a little different. I'm used to doing it at home, but now I do it at their studio mm -hmm. and their environment. Um, you know, sometimes I'm used to doing it within 30 days, but you, you know, you're there for a whole week, and yeah. so uh, it was a good experience. So I had a good time. You know, mm -hmm. the guys are great out there. They're really, really great. Uh, so, uh, but I'm looking forward when it gets released, and then I'll make an announcement, um, mm -hmm. the, the, the actual software that's being released. And mm -hmm. so I'm really excited about it. And I'm going to continue adding more to the list and stuff. Yeah. So getting my name out there. And then I'm later on, I'm going to create my own platform uh, for more advanced stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, LinkedIn, you know, does provide most of their stuff. It's really catered for beginners and intermediate users. Mm -hmm. So this, the stuff I'm going to create on my own platform is going to be for the advanced user, which okay. is a smaller crowd. Um, but there's a lot of advanced users looking for more advanced stuff. So, sure. Yeah. So what would you say, I mean, obviously, you know, starting out by serving in the military mm -hmm. and getting all of that education and all of that experience mm -hmm. and using that to then mm -hmm. decide, okay, this is what I really want to do for a career. Mm -hmm. And then gaining more experience and, and knowledge from mm -hmm. working for other companies. I mean, what would you, for our viewers, what would be a couple of things that you would tell them that have been keys for you mm -hmm. to, to be able to actually, you know, start your own business mm -hmm. and have the success that you've had so okay. far and, you know, and obviously growing? Yeah, you know? it, it, it was a long road. You know, at one point, I think it was 2006 when I decided, okay, I need to make the product better. How can I do that? Okay, let me get involved on the beta testing side of the, of the software with Autodesk. So I became mm -hmm. a beta tester for Autodesk, started beta testing a lot of their products. But then I said, you know what? I need to be better myself, too, at the product. So I started self-training at mm -hmm. home. Every like other day, I would spend two days, two hours at home just playing with the software, reading books, watching videos, reading blogs, just educating myself as much as possible, anywhere I can find data. During lunch, I'd be watching training videos of some other somebody else provided online. Mm -hmm. So every day during lunch, for many years, I just watched videos. I did a lot of self-training and, and playing with the software. And then because I'm using the software every day for design, it does help too. And apply that what I've learned and apply it on the project. So um, I think it benefits you once you get to a point. You're like, okay, I'm an expert now. I can turn around. And I want to share my knowledge to people that want to learn the software, but share it the way I learned, you know, so mm -hmm. let me show, you know, I'll show them, but the problem is that everyone learns in a different way, you mm -hmm. know, some people are repetition, so mm -hmm. I got to show them over and over, some people are one-on-one, -on -one. they got to, they want that one-on-one -on -one training, mm -hmm. some people are handouts and books, so you got to, I have to create handouts for those kind of type of training exercises mm -hmm. and um, pamphlets and stuff, and some people are visual, you know, some people just want a video, so I'll create those videos and mm -hmm. show it to them. I'm more of a visual person, so I can watch a video and learn it really, really quick. You know, mm -hmm. one or, once or twice and I'm done. I don't mm -hmm. need to watch it again. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, I always tell people, just spend, you know, if you really want to advance yourself in the software, it does help because it advances your career. You know, I got to a point at one point where I got so good that I was working on the project by myself. They realized, that, okay, we need to put this guy on project by himself because he goes such a fast rate, mm -hmm. you know, so... Uh, but I always tell people, just take 30 minutes you, while you're eating lunch, go watch a video, learn something. It's just just sit there and eat and watch videos, and then mm -hmm. you can really learn a lot if mm -hmm. you do that every day, sitting mm -hmm. there watching videos. And I did that for 10 years, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> watching videos and reading blogs. And just right. like, yeah, it did eat up a lot of my personal time, too. You know, like late in the evenings, you know, I'm, I'm watching videos, learning and stuff, mm -hmm. you know. But it was a long journey, but I thought it was worth it, you know, really, mm -hmm. really worth it. So um, I took part of a lot of user groups. Anywhere I could get some free learning and stuff. So mm -hmm. I went to a bunch of local uh, user group events. Mm -hmm. I went to Autodesk University, and that's where basically 80 different countries show up for this big convention. Mm -hmm. Everybody in the AC industry, drone, 3D modeling, civil architectural, they all go there once a year to go to uh, this, you know, there's about 600 classes that happen. Mm -hmm. And I would take some classes and stuff. But uh, I always tell people just take a little free time and, and advance your knowledge in the software. and. Trust me, once you get better at it, you're knocking out plans faster when you're doing engineering, and then 
bonuses and pay raises come fall right behind if you're mm -hmm. knocking stuff out faster. So, yeah. so I'm hearing education, training, mm -hmm. and then surrounding yourself with people that are better at something than you are. Yeah, I do right. have friends <laughs> that are more advanced than me. Yeah. I do have a group of friends that are also experts themselves. They're, mm -hmm. they're Autodesk expert elites. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we share ideas back and forth, and mm -hmm. it's good to share that knowledge and stuff. So, you know, we're all strong in certain parts of the software. Some of us are really strong at this part of the software, while I'm strong at this part, and we'll share ideas and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. it is a, it's probably one of the hardest software to learn uh, within Autodesk products, mm -hmm. our engineering software. It's just so large. You know, I've been using the software since it came out in 2005. Five. And I still don't know everything. That's right. what's crazy. It was like, oh, you've been using it since day one and still don't know everything? Yeah. How's that possible? I feel Let's the just... same way with some of the software yeah. we use. It's like, That's... yeah. <laughs> because there's <laughs> new updates every quarter. Just yesterday, I was like, oh, wow, it does that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly. like, so, yes. And if you don't use it, you forget about it. You, know, right. if you don't yeah. use that specific feature tool in the software. So there's things I never touch because I, I don't have that kind of uh, parts uh, or design in my, in my project. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. So, um, where does Tony see Civil CAD Learning Solutions like in the next two or three years? I mean, I know you've got this, you know, all this content that's yeah. getting ready to be released along with the mm -hmm. new software release. I'm sure that's gonna yeah. that's gonna do a lot for you as mm -hmm. far as you know recognition and, and yeah. building your authority and things like that. But how do you see that? I mean, how, where do you see your business in the next two to three years or so? Well, hopefully, you know, we'll have a lot more employees. I'd like to see it grow. Uh, mm -hmm. I'd like to be a, a brand name, um, something that people can go to and say, hey, you know, we got a lot of training, good at training, not just software related, but also design related too. Mm -hmm. So uh, I want to teach them what I learned in design. So they really need to know design too while you're doing this, using the software too. Mm -hmm. So um, the software is only as good as the users. If the user's not that good, you're mm -hmm. going to hate the software. You're going to blame the software. But, you know, once you get really good at the software, you know, you can really uh, take off with it. Now, three, five years, I'm hoping, you know, maybe 10 employees, hopefully. Yeah. And that's the goal, you know, to be bigger. Um, but I don't want the quality to go down. So I'm very picky who I'm going to bring into the company. I want them to be experts themselves mm -hmm. and then share their knowledge, how they learn. It could be totally different than me, you mm -hmm. know. And, um, and share it to users, you know, but still be affordable. I want it to be affordable for the users to, uh, that can take this training, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, that's something that's kind of key in my company is I want it to be very affordable for people to take cool. a class, not too expensive. Oh, we can't afford that to send four or five people, you know. So I do try to work with customers a lot. So, mm -hmm. um, but, um, yeah, I'm hoping, you know, in 10 years or five years I can be at that location. So. Uh, I don't want to uh, grow too fast, you know, mm -hmm. so I want to take it, you know, slowly grow. Um, but uh, I have several people I have my eyes on, <laughs> and right. so I do, I am talking and expanding. There are other companies that have their own company, it might be a merger, who knows. Sure. So, um, so I have friends that have uh, their own training uh, company and stuff mm -hmm. like that, so maybe a possible merger or something okay. like that. So Cool. Yep. So. All right, so we're going to wrap things up here, um, but why don't you tell our viewers how they can uh, connect with you. There may be some people out there that maybe have a project, or maybe okay. there are other yeah. engineers, or yeah. maybe they want to learn about, yeah. you know, your industry and, and check yep. out check out your content and everything. So yeah. tell everybody the easiest way to get in touch uh, with you. The probably the fastest way, you can uh, email me. So mm -hmm. at uh, Tony, C-A-R, I'm sorry, T-C-A-R-C-A-M-O at CivilCADLS.com. And you can also find me on LinkedIn. I pretty much lived on LinkedIn, so every mm -hmm. day I'm posting, sharing stuff on LinkedIn. So if you go on LinkedIn and look, you know, uh, type in Tony Carcamo, so C-A-R-C-A-M-O, you'll find me on there. Be sure it's Tony Carcamo in the Dallas location. Okay. <laughs> so there's other Tony Carcamo. So yeah. and just uh, message me on LinkedIn. So okay. you know, right now my website, I'm reamping my website, kind of redoing it, so okay. it's not up and ready to go right now. So, but. Uh, I do go to other uh, network events. Sometimes you might find me at some commercial network events and uh, professional networking events, so you might find me there too. Okay. So, but or you can always find them right here right at in. Venture, Venture X by the Galleria yep. too. So yep. stop by and say hi to both of yeah. us. So, yep. all right. Well, thank you, Tony. Thank you. Appreciate your time yeah. today. Thanks for thank being you. on the yeah. VX Factor Live Profiles in Entrepreneurship and. 
Tune in next week. We have a guest coming in next week, uh, Justin Helms, who's actually managing the uh, VentureX, new VentureX location in Uptown. Uh, so we're going to have him on and uh, talking about what he's got going on with, uh, with his business. So we look forward to seeing you next week on the VX Factor Live.